All right, everyone, I have one o'clock central, so I am going to go ahead and get us started. We may have some folks uh, filtering in here as we talk, but we'll let them join as we go. Welcome uh, to our first webinar for job seekers on LinkedIn. I am Jen Radke, the CEO of the National Institute for Social Media, and I'm excited to have everybody here. Uh, it looks like from the poll so far, we do have a variety of folks uh, at different skill levels, but the majority of you are just looking for some tips to get better and better. So I'm hoping that I can help you with that today. Um, but for those of you just setting up an account, we will have some very basic information for you as well to get going on that uh, this process. So if you haven't yet weighed in on the poll, please feel to do, sorry, feel free to do that uh, on the chat box. And I am gonna go ahead and take my video off the screen so you can see uh, more of the presentation. We're gonna cover a couple of things today. We're gonna to talk about your profile. We're gonna talk about how to make it better for job seekers, but we're also gonna show you some very practical ways to find people to connect with, hiring managers, others within your industry, folks that may be of assistance to you. And then at the end, we're gonna talk through some ways to manage this with all its time, because I know that social media can be uh, overwhelming for a lot of people, and we think that uh, it's necessary to spend hours and hours a day doing it, and that's not true. We wanna have authentic and real uh, time conversations, but there are ways to help us through that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to post them in the chat. And myself or Amy Jalman, who is helping out as a moderator today, will make sure that we address each of those questions as we go. All right. So here we go. We're going to start up, uh, talking about how to better use LinkedIn for finding your next opportunity. And the first thing I wanted to chat about is why LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn has a misconception to it that it is only for job seekers and though while we are all here because of that purpose or at least that was uh, the invitation right is for job seekers it does have a lot of additional uses to it there are uh, two new LinkedIn users every second and approximately 95 percent of recruiters are utilizing LinkedIn to find new candidates it is important that we're a part of this. Uh, another fun statistic you might be interested to hear is just over 133 million US um, residents are users of LinkedIn. So that is a huge number of people to connect with, to learn from and to grow with. So our goal today is actually to set ourselves apart from that 133 uh, US population, or if you're in other parts of the country, the global population uh, of 500 plus million. And instead of blending in uh, like the forest on the right side of the screen here, we wanna stand out a little bit like the tree on the left. So that's what we're gonna go for. One of the things I want you all to think about as we get started is really what is your purpose in utilizing LinkedIn in the first place? So for many of you, it is likely to find folks in your job search. Uh, for others, you may be able to find new opportunities to identify consulting opportunities or grow your business. And so we need to think through what your purpose is. And the first part of that is really asking yourself an important question. Who are you trying to reach? Because if we don't know who we're trying to reach, it is difficult for us to tailor a message or to start the process of search in a way that is uh, positive uh, and going to reap the results that we're looking for. So we wanna make sure that we understand who it is that we're trying to reach. From there, we have to identify a few things about ourselves. And I, I am from Minnesota in the Midwest, and I know, you know, there's a joke here that we don't like to talk about ourselves. You know, we wanna uh, kind of be shy and be quiet and hear about other people. But the reality is, is we need to share what our area of expertise is. What are we good at? Why should someone hire us, right? And then finally, try to put yourself in the shoes of the people who are searching for you. And ask yourself, if I was gonna look for someone like me, what would I search for? 
what are those words that I would look for? Okay, because as we're going through some of the basics of putting together a profile, um, these are questions that have to pop up and we have to keep forefront in the process so that we know that we're answering them and making ourselves more visible to those who are looking. All right, the very first thing that we're going to talk about, and this is uh, for all of those just getting started, but also those who maybe utilize uh, LinkedIn a lot, you must include a professional headshot or a photo. Um, you're 14% more likely to be found in search and 36% more likely to receive a message from someone when you have a photo. And I'll just be honest, if I'm going to meet with someone and our connection process is only through that of LinkedIn, I want to see the whites of your eyes, right, uh, in a picture before I go and meet you in public. So it's important to have a picture, let people know what you look like. And so let's talk about a couple of do's and don'ts around the photos because I know these scare people. So first of all, make sure that you're showing your face. Um, I have seen a bunch of people try to get creative and they want to, uh, you know, be more artistic in their shots. But if you're not showing the face, then the purpose of really letting people see you and who they're talking to uh, isn't accomplished. Make sure it's appropriate. Uh, a lot of people like to pull, you know, the picture they looked the best at when they went to the college frat party. It's probably not a great idea. You also don't want to cut yourself out of a picture that had other people in it. It just doesn't look as good. You can show your personality, and I, and I have a couple of pictures here on the do side um, that show you some variety, right? The one in the middle is very, very typical standard background. The one at the top and the one down at the bottom, you can see that they're not centered. Um, you would, of course, make sure that uh, the picture is centered in the frame in which LinkedIn gives you, but the backgrounds get to show a little bit more about their personality and what they do, and that's perfectly fine to do. Um, several of mine in the past have been taken outside. It shows a little bit more personality and color. Uh, it's okay to smile. Uh, Definitely doesn't have to look like you're unhappy with the world when you take a profile picture. Do make sure it's recent. So if you haven't updated yours in 10 years, maybe it's time. Uh, and it's okay to add a header image too across the back of your LinkedIn profile. This is an even better opportunity for you to kind of show who you are and what you're interested in. On the left hand, uh, or I'm sorry, the right hand side of the screen here on the don't side, um, you should probably not use a logo, don't take a selfie uh, or a full body, body picture. You know, um, more than 50% of people are accessing social on their mobile phones. So when you think of putting a full body picture into your profile itself, the profile image, it gets so small that again, there's no way that they can really see who it is. Make sure that it isn't a grainy image, it's, it's easy. Um, to kind of get something that's not of good quality, so make sure you're finding something there. And then most importantly is don't forget this step. Um, I see that there was a question here about why shouldn't we include a logo in the background? Um, you can definitely include a photo in the background, the larger header image that goes uh, across the top, or even in the background of your headshot but the main picture for your profile should be you and your face. Uh, if you have a business page, then it's fine to do it with a logo, but if you're, it's your personal profile, that small circular photo should be of you. So hopefully that answers your question there. Thank you so much for asking. This is the circular photo that I'm talking about. This is your headshot. That's the one you don't wanna have a um, logo in. You wanna make sure is, uh, you, this longer one across the top, which right now uh, mine was this white background with the word idea. That's the header that could be a logo. If you're speaking at a conference, you can put all those types of things in the background that show a little bit more about you and your personality. So now that we've covered pictures, which are important, let's go ahead and talk about this headline. And so I pulled this photo from my uh, profile this morning. So you could take a look here and see what I mean by a headline. So the headline is the words that come right below your name in your profile. So you'll see mine says speaker, trainer, consultant, social media strategist. And then I have a hashtag in here, hashtag MDMC19, which is an event. 
um, that I will be attending and speaking at later this spring. And so I wanted to make sure that what was in here were words that people might search for. Okay. Um, so let's, I'm sorry, Michael, I, I'm sorry, you're maybe not seeing my um, mouse, and I apologize for that. So hopefully you are able to see the screen uh, and the image that's on the screen. So I just want to make sure that that's working for you. So let's talk about how we should create this headline piece. The first thing is unfortunately a not title. Um, I would recommend that you not say you're a job seeker or that you're seeking a new opportunity or you're unemployed. Uh, and here's the reason for that. Job, uh, people who are searching for you, right? Hiring managers, recruiters, they're not gonna enter unemployed into the search term and see who they can find. Because one, uh, they wanna find people who have the opportunity to be employed. But for, for the second part of that is um, they don't, it's not descriptive. They don't know what you've done in the past what you want to do, um, it, it doesn't help them, right, narrow down their search, and they don't have time to dig in. So you've got to kind of walk them through that process and tell them what it is that you do. It also doesn't have to be a job title. Um, you'll notice that in mine right now, CEO is not there. That's my job title, but it's not there. It also doesn't have to include the name of your company, because if you're looking at someone's profile, Towards the uh, right-hand side here, you'll see that it says that I work at the National Institute for Social Media. And so that information is there and you can use your header characters for something that's a little bit more powerful and descriptive. So what we wanna think about are you know, words that would be included in search, things that are gonna catch their attention, right? and really help drag them into your profile and let them see more of what it is that you have to offer, okay? So there's an activity that I would like you guys to think through here. And I know homework isn't something you expected today, but this will help us get through this process. And even for those of you who are, have been actively using LinkedIn and are just looking for some pointers, maybe this is a great way to kind of freshen up your account a little bit. Um, Walk through and describe for yourself two to four words that describe the work that you do. And I would again say, try to avoid a job title, but instead, what is that that you actually do? What do you bring to an organization? Um, why are you awesome? right? What are the two to four words that set you apart from other people? Um, typically, if I'm talking to somebody, you know, in finance, for example, I'll say, great, you're a CPA. That's great. But that doesn't really describe what you do, right? How do you help a business? And then why should I hire you versus the CPA next to you, right? What makes you awesome? It might even be a short phrase, that talk about the benefits of hiring you or buying from you. What's your niche, what's your area of expertise, right? And so when you're thinking through your headline, keep this little activity in the back of your mind. There's one other thing that we're going to look at, and that is keywords. And so if you're completely lost and you're like, I don't know where to start with creating a headline, I don't know where to start with what words to include in my profile or any of that, one of the easiest things to do is to go through and find keywords for you. Uh, when, what are those words that HR managers will be putting into that search bar trying to find you, right? And then when you know what those words are, you have to take a look at your profile and see, are they even entered in there, right? Because if they're not entered there, then it doesn't make sense, right? You're not going to be found for those words. Um, there's a project or a little homework assignment here uh, that will take a little bit more time that I want to encourage you guys to do. And as I'm talking through this, I'm also going to pull up real quick a site so that you can see it, okay? But one of the homework assignments is for you to go out to Indeed or Ladders or whatever job, um, job board you prefer, right? And search out eight to 10 job descriptions 
that you would love to work in that position. And now you don't have to filter through and make sure it's in the right geographic location or look at all of the um, requirements to say, you know, well, do I have a bachelor's degree in marketing specifically? What you're trying to do is find the words that are valuable to you in the description of the of the position. So let me show you by going to Indeed, and hopefully everyone now can see um, my browser screen instead of the PowerPoint. I'm just going to type manufacturing in here, or I'm sorry, marketing in here, and pull up a couple of positions to show you what this looks like. So what we're looking at here is we're looking through the marketing coordinator position, their job summary, which sometimes includes great information about the company, and you want those words, okay? You want the responsibilities, because that's going to really define what it is you'll be doing, and some of the skill sets, but you don't have to go into qualifications, right? Take that information and add it into a word cloud I use tagcrowd.com, it's a free service. There are others out there if you prefer. Um, some of the company information in this particular job posting was actually found below qualifications, so I'm gonna copy that as well and paste it into here. So both um, the job description as well as some company information is here. And now you're gonna notice I only have one. I want you to do eight to 10. But what happens here is when you click the word visualize, a word cloud's gonna come up and it's gonna show you the words that are utilized most often. So when you do this for eight to 10 jobs that you would love to work in, right? You would love to have, you wanna look at these big words and see how they fit. These are the key words you might wanna make sure are in your profile. So you could then clear this all out and you could take your LinkedIn information, your resume, whatever it is that you want to check and you can paste that in here and make sure they're in alignment, okay? So that's a little homework assignment for you uh, to get you started on keywords and try to take some of that stress out of keywords for you because I know for a lot of people that can be tough, right? It can be hard to um, know where to get those keywords from, okay? Here's a couple of headline examples. And as we're going through this, I would love you guys to throw in the chat box um, which of these you think are the most helpful in telling what people do, okay? And just put the to letters by them. I've got, uh, I think, A through G here. So um, the first one is a freelance videography and film editor. Option B is cultivating resilient and courageous leaders through my role as a keynote speaker, motivational speaker, and session speaker. C is in transition at XYZ company. I did take all company names out, so that is why. D is I help entrepreneurs start and grow businesses with content marketing. E is regional manager, mid-market at company. F is driven, passionate, personable. And G is consultant. So take just a second, if you wouldn't mind, and throw in the chat bar which of these letters or which of these titles or headlines you think are the most helpful. Outstanding. So we're getting a lot of A's and B's and D's this is fantastic, you guys. Thank you so much. I went into my um, connections and just pulled out a few titles that were in there, and I wanted to give you a variety. So for example, A and B both come up quite often here in the feedback that you guys are giving me, and I love that. Um, so A and B are descriptive, but they're different. The first one is uh, very streamlined, right? And it says what they do great keywords. B gives you more of a little bit of a story, right? Um, also compelling, and those words are there. We know that that person really wants to work with leaders as a speaker, right, and the different types of speakers. 
And Georgia, I think that's exactly what you pointed out, right? You, you talk about they uh, um, and the re results that they get because they're involved. And I love that as well. So it's important to know those things. Um, when I think about, you know, G, for example, um, a consultant doesn't tell me what they consult on. And so that's a challenge for me. I have to dig deep. And as much as I love the words with F, the driven, passionate, and personable, again, it doesn't tell me what they're driven to do. And so you can put driven, passionate, and personal there so that you can say what they get when they're working with you. But don't forget to put those keywords that are actually going to be help you be found in your industry you're looking for. Outstanding. Thank you all for your help and participation in here. All right. So hopefully now we have a, a, a handle on the headline or at least a place to start, right, to find our keywords. So the next part, part we're going to talk about is the summary. And I wanted you guys to start thinking about this as your story. So a lot of people say LinkedIn is just my online resume. It can be an online resume and it has components of that because you put your work experience and your education and all of that. But it really is an opportunity for you to say who you are. And the summary section is a great place to do just that, okay? So your summary, again, is a place where it's hard because we have to talk about ourselves. And you know what, if you're really uncomfortable with this, you might want to work with a writer to ha help you kind of pull out um, what your summary should include. But really, you just want to think about what is the value that you bring to an organization, right? Because you only see the first two to three sentences without hitting a see more button, you want to catch their attention right away. So I don't recommend that job seekers ever start this with a very uh, kind of standard line of something like, I am a passionate and hardworking professional looking for an opportunity to help your business grow. Because everybody will say that, right? So what is it that you do that's differently? And yeah, you might be passionate and you might be hardworking and you might want to help a business grow. And those things can all be included in the story in a different place, but catch their attention so they read past that and figure out what benefit they actually you actually bring. Don't forget keywords here. This is um, search engine optimization, you know, helping you be found in search. Uh, you want to enter them in your summary just as badly as you do in your headline. Um, LinkedIn has its own algorithm and I'm I see uh, Mike has joined us, Mike O'Neill, and he knows quite a bit about Sales Navigator side of uh, LinkedIn. And I know that he uh, probably could give us even some more information on how the algorithm ranks. But your headline is by far one of the most important places to enter those keywords. Your summary comes a very close second. And then from there, your experience uh, and other areas in which you're adding in. So make sure that you're putting your keywords throughout your profile and make sure that headline, your summary, and then experience all have those. Thank you, Mike. Uh, where possible, share data. So your summary should tell a story, but not just a story about what you were asked to do in your last job, but what you accomplished, right? If you have actual metrics for something, you know, employee turnover rate was reduced or your sales quotas were exceeded by X percent, share that information here, whatever that uh, area is. If it's proprietary information, right, then be very careful and do not share it. But talk about what you can and give concrete examples whenever possible. If you implemented a new training program, talk about that. What effectiveness did it bring, right? How did you help streamline the time um, that it took people to onboard? You also have the opportunity to add multimedia into your summary, and this can entice your audience, get them interested in learning more and more about you, what you do, the value that you bring, right? Um, all of these pieces are extremely helpful in hiring managers being able to understand more about you before they have um, to take the time to get you, you know, on the phone uh, or in person. And so you want to give them as much information as possible. 
Now I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint again one time and I just want to show you what I mean by where the summary is and where you get to kind of tell of a story. And I'll just be honest, I know that you guys could pick apart my summary as well uh, because no one is 100% perfect, but I want to show you a couple of different things about it, okay? So when you log in, these first three sentences are what is seen before someone has to hit a see more or a show more button. So that's why you really want to make sure that you're catching attention right away, okay? So my first sentence actually is bridging the gap between social media professionals and employment through certification. My goal and hope is that people will say, how do you do that, right? You'll also see that before I hit see more, some of my multimedia stuff is actually here. And so you can see that there are pieces that they may want to explore further. So when you hit show more, then I get some nice formatting. And I've broken mine out into an about me section where I talk a little bit about my background and experience, some of my beliefs, what it is that I find important as a business leader or as a professional in this space, and then some of the speaking that I've done. And I've even gone so far as to list a couple of the topics um, that I've spoken about in the past. So you have to take this as an example, not an end all be all, but as one example of how you can kind of organize uh, this part of your profile. This is where you get to tell that story and make sure that you're sharing information, okay? All right. So in the first half of our presentation today, we have talked about the importance of a photo, how to find a headline and not let it be just your job title. We've given you some tools and a homework assignment around finding those keywords using tools like Tag Crowd or another word cloud system. And then how to add in your summary uh, multimedia if possible. So the next part that I really wanna talk about is search search and how to engage, okay? Um, because the majority of you are not in the process of just setting up your profile, I wanna spend a little bit more time here in this search and engage because this is really where you bring uh, the building of relationships, right? Where the networking happens. And social is such a great opportunity for that and LinkedIn is a wonderful tool for professional networking. So we're gonna go ahead and look at how do we search, right? What are the things that we search when we're searching in, in LinkedIn and what are some of the great tools that we get? So let's go back to the platform, okay? And when you are in LinkedIn, right in the top of the toolbar is a search function, okay? So let's say that we want to look for marketing directors, okay? So I'm gonna just type in marketing directors, and I'm gonna hit search. When that happens, I have the opportunity to kind of filter through a few additional things. I can look for people, I could look for jobs, I could look for content, or I have a more, so I can look for companies, schools, groups, okay? So we're gonna just click people for right now. When I do that, some of these other drop downs still are offered to me and it allows me to filter even further through this. So I can filter through and say, I just want my first level connections, those people that I'm already connected to, or I want second level connections, those people that um, are not directly connected to me, but to somebody that I am connected to, or a third level, which is you know my friends of my friends friends. <laughs> so my third level plus. So I'm going to go ahead and hit um, second level and show you what that looks like. Okay. So these are people I'm not currently directly connected to, but have marketing directors somewhere in their in their profile. Okay. And what you'll notice if we look at Brian Thorne here, he's got marketing executive in the top but director is down in a past performance. So because I've searched for the words marketing directors without any Boolean search features to it, so in a, uh, for example, I haven't put 
uh, parentheses around it or quotation marks around it or uh, it's not showing me exactly what I searched. It's looking for those words and showing me any combination of them. Now, when we start talking about engaging with folks, right, a lot of people get excited here and they just go over and they hit connect. When you do that, um, it just sends the automatic LinkedIn uh, connection, especially if you're on mobile, it will send an automatic LinkedIn connection. But you want to make sure you're personalizing your connection requests um, because you want to take the time to start building that relationship from the very beginning. So if I wanted to connect with Bob here, I would go into his profile. I might take a few seconds to actually look at it and make sure I understand why I want to connect with him, right? And then I would hit the connect button. It gives me the opportunity, and LinkedIn's even inviting me now to add a note. You want to do this 99% of the time. The only 1% that you're not going to do this is maybe when you're standing in a physical network meeting and you're talking to somebody and you say, I'm going to send you an invitation on LinkedIn, because that seems a little overkill then to personalize it. But outside of that, you really want to try to send a personal message. Let them know why you're interested in connecting. Now, as a job seeker, you don't want to say, you know, hi, Bob, looking forward to talking with you. I want to work at Watermark Title Agency, and I'm hoping you can get me a job. That is all about you and doesn't actually help you build any sort of a relationship. So instead, try to ask them a question. Let, you can let them know you are seeking information. You know, you'd like to know what he enjoys most about working at Watermark Title, whatever the case may be, but personalize that um, invitation before you send it. Okay. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna actually put parentheses around it this time and do marketing director. And it's gonna help us streamline our search just a little bit. I'm also going to change connections to be people that are further out, my three plus. So one of the pushbacks that I get a lot from folks are, and I shouldn't even say pushback, one of the questions I get a lot from folks are, do I have to have a premium account? And I just wanna kind of address that right away. Um, I personally think that it is a individual by individual decision around what your goals are for the platform because there are several different options when you talk about LinkedIn Premium, Sales Navigator, all of those different pieces and functions. And not all of us need the biggest uh, package that LinkedIn offers us to have, right? So it really depends on what your goals are. There is a career one. And so um, that will, is like $29 a month, I believe, and it provides you with five in-mails that you can send. But there are some ways to kind of get around uh, not being able to connect. So you'll see here, like Ann Peralt for me, uh, it says that I can't offer her a connection request. I have to message her is what it says. But if I click on Ann's profile, and then I, I hit the little three dots next to it, that's gonna give me additional options. There is a connect option that comes up here. And so, it might be valuable for you to spend a little bit of time figuring out if you need to have all those in-mails to connect with the people you're looking to connect with, or if you're just uh, needing to find kind of workarounds uh, to get to these pieces, okay? So Catherine, you asked a great um, question. You said, would you recommend adding articles to your profile that you find representatives of your professional philosophy? Um, that is a great question, and I am going to actually talk about that in just a few minutes, so I will make sure I get back to that. Okay. Um, while I'm here in search, does anyone have any specific questions around search? Um, and what I've shown you here. So go ahead and put it in the chat, okay? Is 
If you're not worried about uh, connections, you can search by location. And if the location doesn't come up in the suggested, suggested areas here, you can add one. And if you start to type something like Atlanta, right, it's going to give you a couple of opportunities or options for what to pull. So I can look for people uh, third plus in Atlanta that follow marketing directors. So I can very specifically hone in my search, okay? I can look for people who work with current companies. I'm sure many of you have identified companies that you want to work with. Uh, so you could look up specific companies as well. The search options are, I would say, in some ways limitless. So spend a little time here and make sure you're looking for things that can help you. A couple of other pieces that I, I want to show before I um, jump back into the PowerPoint uh, is that you can take a look at who is seeing your profile. And this is one of those things around premium that people tend to like. So when you go to your own profile, and this is mine, so when you go to yours, you should have a dashboard that shows up in the middle that gives you some data. And they're blue links, so they're hyperlinks, so I can click on them. These are helpful too in determining whether or not you're being found for the things that you want to be found for when people are searching, as well as give you some key ideas of who's looking. So the first one I'm going to look at is where am I finding myself? Where are people finding me when they look for me in search? So um, this top searchers that have been looking in the last week have been looking from these companies. So if I was interested in working with one of these companies, I can go out and check out who they are. I can see their job titles here. And then down below, I can see some of the keywords that were used to find me. Um, and so if those are not the keywords I'm hoping they're gonna find me for, maybe I need to make some updates to my profile, okay? In this second, sec I'm sorry, in the first section here, I can see who's viewed my profile. Now, I do not currently have a premium account. And so I won't see everyone, right? I don't have the option to see everyone. I am in here every day. Um, so I can go back and I can see the people who are most recently looking at my profile, but I won't get to see people who have viewed me in private mode um, or everyone. For me right now, this is enough, but this might be a benefit for the, um, for the career search uh, premium or business premium is if you can see more of these people because these are great people to maybe send an invitation to uh, and see if they would like to connect since they've already been perusing your account. All right, so I see a bunch of connections coming in here. Um, I know Lena, you asked, uh, do I recommend cold connecting with people? Meaning I really don't know them at all. Um, I personally don't have a problem cold connecting with people if I have a reason. So if there is something that we have in common, a business relationship perhaps that we might be able to help each other with, um, something like that that can help us move forward, absolutely don't have any problem with it at all. You have to make sure that you understand what that process is. Um, LinkedIn will limit you as to how many invitations you can send out in your lifetime. So you probably just don't want to randomly send out invitations uh, willy-nilly to everyone out there. So be more intentional about it. Uh, so one another question was about whether or not you should add MBA candidate to your profile description. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're thinking, but yes, I think MBA candidate should be added into your profile. So it can be added in the summary. It could be added in the headline, although I'm not 100% sure that that would be helpful in search, but you could see. I know it's something that uh, came up for me, so maybe people are using it, uh, as well as putting it in your education. So there's a couple of different areas there. Anita, you asked if you have to have a premium account to do a wider search. Um, you can do more searches uh, and get more specific. And I think Mike has actually put in the comments there um, some of those options and Laura's chiming in as well. So great, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And 
Peggy asked a great question. Even in premium, uh, if you pay for premium, you cannot see people who have marked themselves as private because that's a privacy setting that they have. So absolutely correct there, Peggy. Wonderful questions, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, so we're talking about um, search here. The next piece that I wanted to talk about was around engagement. So we've talked just a little bit about some of the things that you can do um, to connect. You know, how do you do that? But I want to give you five different things that you can do in five minutes each, or I'm sorry, 15 minutes each. Oh, I'm getting so excited here um, to kind of build up your profile. So it doesn't have to take all day, right? So the first is adding new connections. So you can make a step to say, I'm gonna review the people who've looked at my profile, figure out if they're folks I wanna connect with, and then send an invitation over. If you attend a conference, a networking event, um, some sort of a, a job seekers activity, whatever the, the case may be, a job fair, go look for those folks online and send them an invitation to connect. If you've identified a new company that you'd like to work with, search out some people who may be hiring managers or might be uh, great resources to tell you a little bit about the company culture and connect with those people, okay? If you set aside 15 minutes just to go out and make some new connections every day, that's a huge activity, right? That's making a lot of impact. If you wanna take a little different approach, and this actually goes back to an earlier question, whoops, um, about sharing content, absolutely should share content. So there are a couple of different types of content that you may find yourself sharing. The one I'm talking about right here are articles, thoughts, upcoming events, um, short comments, images of places you've been um, that will show up in the feed of your profile. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here in just a second. So I think somebody asked if there was an article uh, written by someone else that aligns with your philosophy, can you share that? Absolutely you can. Share a link to the original article um, so that people can go read it. And I would actually even recommend that you take it maybe one step further and ask people a question about what they think about the material or point out what you agree most with and why, how it's impacted your business, your leadership, your, um, or politely even disagree with a piece of it. So you might go through, you know, the top five reasons uh, to get involved with change management, for example, and you maybe aren't 100% on board with number four. So it's fine to say, hey, I agree with these points, with the exception of number four, I think it should be tweaked in this way and kind of explain it. Because what that does is it shows not only your values, your philosophy, your interest in your industry, the fact that you're keeping up with your industry and you're doing some reading and paying attention, but you're sharing your thought leadership. How have you experienced it? How has it worked for you, right? So there are different ways to do that. You can also comment on other people's content and congratulate people um, when appropriate. So I always have a piece of caution around congratulations because LinkedIn will send us notes and say, hey, so-and-so's got a job uh, anniversary, right? Be careful because I'm sure if uh, you are a job seeker on the phone right now, it is possible you have not put an end date on your last employment. And if that's the case, and all of a sudden you come across an anniversary and you get hundreds of people saying congratulations, it doesn't feel super great, right? The other thing is um, sometimes, and I don't recommend this, but sometimes people don't update their LinkedIn profile very often. And so they go in maybe three or four years later and they go and add positions and LinkedIn recognizes it as a brand new position, even if the date um, started three years ago. So then you kind of look like uh, a little silly when you send them a congratulations on starting their brand new position. So it is definitely important to uh, watch a few of those pieces. So here's what I'm talking about with content. When you go into LinkedIn, this middle section here is called your feed. And this is where the people that you are connected with, 
the articles that they've posted are coming up, okay? And so um, I just refreshed mine to see that Tim Johnson of Positive Light Media has shared some images of some work that they have done recently. And he's even gone ahead and tagged who he was working with. Whenever possible, if you are talking about someone, giving them kudos, right, a company or an individual, tag them. And I will show you how to do that if you don't know how. Because otherwise you're talking to them, but they don't know it, right? And that's a sad thing. So all of these are more shorter form content. They may have links or photos. Um, LinkedIn is also starting to add hashtags. So you can start to watch that, see which ones follow for your industry and the things that you're in, uh, looking at and involved in and add those. Hashtags will help you be found um, or help people find you who are searching for a hashtag instead of an actual topic um, specifically. To post here, all you have to do is hit the start a post at the very top. You get to choose who you want to see it. So it can be anyone. You can add Twitter. I actually recommend that you do these separately, but if you wanted to, you can have it sent directly out to Twitter as well. The reason I separate them is because Twitter has fewer characters that it lets uh, out there. And so if you write a lot LinkedIn in LinkedIn, it will automatically cut off on Twitter. The other piece is you have potentially different audiences in each platform. And so you want to make sure that you understand um, how to speak to each of them. You can share it with only your connections and then it provides some groups that you could add it to. You can actually see all of the groups you're part of and add it there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say anyone can see it. I can type whatever post I want to post here. Now I'm gonna show you how to uh, actually tag someone. So let me say thank you to, and then if I put the at symbol, and start typing a name, okay? LinkedIn is gonna give me options of people. When I find the person that I'm looking for, I can go ahead and click on that name. And you'll see it's gonna come up in bold, and that means that it's a hyperlink. So people know that they can go straight to her, and Amy's gonna know that I have tagged her in a post, right? So I can say, thank you, Amy, for helping today, right? Now, there are times where it's not as easy for LinkedIn to recognize who you're talking about. And actually, our company is a good example. So if I do at national, it doesn't come up, right? So I do an underscore institute, mm -hmm, still doesn't come up, underscore for underscore social. Now, oh, doesn't still, still doesn't come up media. There we go. Now I can tag that company. So for people with longer names or people who have very common names and you're trying to find, narrow it down, or for companies that are longer, um, use that at symbol first and the underscore to tie it together so you can actually tag them in that. If you add a hashtag, it gives you some opportunities here for choices based on what I've put in my content, or I can add my own. Hashtags are simply an additional search mechanism. So instead of typing social media into the search bar, hoping that I get people who are actually talking, talking about digital media and social media, instead of um, the media's response to social outcry, I can type in hashtag social media and know that it's intentionally um, going to be flagged as something people have put out there as being a social media piece, okay? I can also add a photo and add a video or add a document and hit post for people to see it. Okay, I'm not going to post this right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I wanna discard it. But that is one way to share, um, to share information. You'll notice right underneath the start a post, you also have a write an article piece. This is kind of what I call a bonus feature when I'm talking with job seekers, but this is a way for you to blog within the platform and actually share your own ideas and expertise in a blog format. So you have the idea of being able to put an image here, you title it, you write what you want, add additional images and things of that nature, and then that goes onto your profile as well. There are some benefits to that we can talk about uh, as we get closer to wrapping up here as well, but there's two different ways to post. 
Okay, so engaging, we want to add new connections, we want to share valuable content, write a letter of recommendation for someone else. Um, it is always great to give, right? So think of those people who have made huge impact in your career so far and write a letter of recommendation. You can also ask colleagues, former managers, those types of folks who have worked with you in the past to write recommendations for you when you're asking for recommendations. Definitely be specific about what you're looking for. Um, when I worked with Argosy University, uh, it was a long time ago, um, but I had about six different positions in the time that I was there. And each of those positions, I connected with different people and sometimes similar people. So when those people ask me for recommendations, I'm not sure from which 12 year period they'd like me to focus. Uh, so I need to make sure that um, you're clear in what you're asking for. You can also update your profile, make changes, refresh your keywords, right? And participate in groups. So you can pick one of, of these five things to do every day. You can assign a day of the week and just do each of them, whatever you liked based on the amount of time that you had. That bonus I was talking about is creating your own original content. It becomes a part of your profile. Members, both not in your network and in your network can see it. It's searchable both on and off LinkedIn and you get some analytics of who's seen it, who's liked it, comments and all of that. Okay, you have to manage time, okay? And you have to keep up. Uh, we live in an unfortunate reality where many of us may be searching for opportunities again in our career. And I know as much as you don't wanna hear that, it's unfortunately has to be said. So even after you land, you need to set aside some time every day to cultivate relationships and continue to build relationships. One way you can do that is if you spend time every morning reading. So I do, I spend about a half an hour every morning reading news, things that are happening in social media. Um, when I find articles that are of value to my audience, I schedule them through a scheduling system. So I have one here um, called Buffer. That's what I currently use. It has a free version. These are why I put them there is because they have free versions. Um, Hootsuite also has a free version. There may be others out there and then there are a ton of paid versions. So depending on your needs, right? But the free versions will get you started. And so as, if something doesn't expire, it's a knowledge base and it's not time sensitive, I go ahead and schedule it to go out at another time so that I don't have to constantly be on social media and it doesn't look like I'm only on at 5.30 in the morning every morning. Outside of that, I also check in a minimum of once a day to see if people are talking with me or mentioning me because if they are, I need to respond. So it may come down as simply as setting some goals for yourself. Okay, how often will you publish one of those bonus posts? How often will you add status updates, share with articles? When will you write letters of recommendation? How many new connections will you strive for every day? What These are just examples and things to think about, but if you set these for yourself, your time will become intentional. You won't have to feel like social media is going to take up your entire day, okay? That is the end of the formal presentation because I do want to, offer some opportunity for you guys to ask questions and I know there's been a bunch coming. Um, so I'm gonna look through the chat bar. In the meantime, I do have contact information up as well. Um, I don't want you all to leave this and go, this was great, but I don't remember a thing she said. You know, feel free to reach out, ask questions uh, and connect with me outside as well. Um, Amy, I know you've been answering a ton of questions. Are there any specifically that um, have not been answered that I need to uh, jump in? <laughs> Thank you, Amy. <laughs> oh, and Laura's been answering too. Thank you. Alyssa asked, uh, how do you recommend updating your profile when you've lost a job and are actively looking for a new gig? Alyssa, that's a great question. So, um, I never recommend that people lie, right, on their profile. And so under experience, you can either add a title of a job there where you're looking uh, and state what you're looking for, or if you are doing some consulting work along the way, legitimately looking for consulting work, then you could add that in as well. Um, but you don't wanna put that up in the header because that headline 
really is the most prominent place for you to find um, search words and keywords. Tom had a question about, will I publish a link to watch this presentation later? It's a great question. Actually, um, the Demio system that we're using today should automatically send you all an email after the session is over with a link to the recording. Um, it is our first uh, time using this. And so that is what I understand will happen. If it doesn't, I will be sending it out. So yes, you will get an opportunity to listen to this again. All right, Anita asked, do I recommend to add a basic graph of your professional history to show the progression you made when you started your professional career and tell where you are now? Oh, that's an interesting question, Anita. Um, a graph or something visual could be a lot of fun, right? Um, I would say take a look at it and then because it's not something that's um, typical, Get some input from some folks. I'd be happy to take a look at what you're thinking there for your graph to show that progression and how you've called it out and offer some suggestions. But anything nice that you can help people visualize um, instead of digesting lots of words is a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. Glad to have you here. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on Twitter. Mike likes Demio. Great, I'm glad. I just started. Uh, Catherine pointed out, yes, uh, you could also Google yourself and see what description comes off. Oftentimes it is LinkedIn, especially if you're being um, active on LinkedIn, Google will find it. But it's also important just to know what comes up when you do Google yourself, because it could be a little bit scary sometimes. So make sure that you do that. Uh, thank you, George. I appreciate very, very much your comments. Oh, another great question, Alyssa, um, if you should put your volunteer work under experience instead of volunteer. Um, if someone, Alyssa, if somebody's in transition, right, and they that is what they're doing currently in transition, sometimes it's nice to put it up in experience until you find that next full-time job so they can see that you are actively doing something now, even though it's unpaid um, and it's a volunteer. But after you land, I would I recommend putting it under volunteer just because I think it clutters up the experience section a lot. Um, but it is one way to kind of fill that gap while you're looking. Oh, you're welcome, Darcy. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, Lena. Okay, let's see. Bridget, do you recommend inviting someone who is hiring for a job you are applying for? Great question, Bridget. So I put a couple of um, kind of timelines around that. So if you are planning to apply for a job or even just submitted your resume, but don't yet have uh, an interview scheduled, I say go ahead and connect with them. Let them know that you're interested and that you're wanting to learn more about the company. I would hesitate to connect with someone like the day before your interview because it's a little bit, um, I don't want to say creepy, but they may feel a little bit put off, right? That it's that it's a little too close for comfort, specifically since they don't know how that interview process is going to go. Um, but then, after the interview, and again, not right after the interview, but after you have had the interview and they've made their decision, even if they didn't choose you, I think it's perfectly acceptable for you to um, connect on LinkedIn with a hiring manager and let them know you appreciated their time, you appreciated the information that they gave you, uh, and you, you understand that you are not the fit for the position at this time, but if something else comes up, you'd love to be considered. All right, Barb asks, do I recommend linking to a marketing piece where you are quoted? Hmm. That's a good question, Barb. Um, I guess for me, I would have follow-up questions. You know, what is the marketing piece? How does that help you? Um, does it give insights into you and 
and the work that you do. Um, if it does, if it ties to you, it's the same industry, you went to a conference and you gave a, uh, you know, a testimonial or something, perhaps it can show your speaking ability or your writing ability, something like that. I say go for it. If it's something kind of off the cuff and doesn't really align with your personal brand, then I maybe wouldn't. All right, folks, I have appreciated all of you and I know I'm losing people uh, as we get here. I do have one quick personal poll. It will only and not be seen by attendees, but only by myself uh, and the admins here. But I'd love to hear what you thought about this on a scale of one to five, uh, one being very little help and five being super helpful, how you felt this webinar was for you today. Um, I was asked earlier if we'd be doing this again. I don't have anything currently on the schedule, um, but I would love to know if you guys found it helpful, because if you did, I may consider doing it again. Um, and if you didn't, that will help me as well. And if you have specific feedback, please feel free to send that to me via email, uh, via LinkedIn, private chat, whatever works for you. It is 2.01, so I have gone one minute over. I will stick around for a second if anyone does have any additional questions, but in the respect of your all's time, thank you so much for being here. Good luck in your search, and please let me know if we can be of assistance. Have a great day.